Lord God, we thank you for today. We ask in Jesus' name that you provide, Lord God, what you promised. We ask in Jesus' name, as Paul prayed for the Ephesian men, we pray for the men here in Farmingdale, New York, as well as those for all over the country online and the technology that you provided, Lord. We ask for the spirit of wisdom that we may know what to do with the spirit of revelation that you give us. Bless us, Lord, with your word, with your will, in Jesus' almighty name. Amen. 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 All right. Uh, Michael, are we on with the guys live too? I believe so. Okay. All righty. Welcome to Thursday Night Live. Uh, uh, no, we didn't steal it from Saturday Night Live, but uh, the live part has nothing to do with that. It has to do with Jesus Christ living inside of you. So I hope you're excited about that. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Scott Caesar. I'm uh, the men's pastor here, uh, along with the coaches at the Men's Discipleship Network. We're in our 25th year. In our 25th year. And, uh, yep, yeah, yeah, thank you. And uh, I see some of you guys have come from different areas. Pastor Kevin, you're always showing up with your crew, and uh, some of you uh, bring one or two other guys. And that, that's great because, uh, like Dr. Andrews said, we are to be disciples, then go make disciples. You know, we have to do the first commandment first. Get that down first. Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your, with all your with all your strength. Yeah, yeah, you got to do it. And it doesn't take much of a man to love God, but it does take all he's got. Right? Or it takes all we got. And that's all he asked for. He just asked for all we got. And uh, we're, I'm excited of, about what we're going to talk about tonight. And uh, what I'd like to do is I want to start out sharing a story with you. And uh, just don't judge me because of the story. Is that Okay. I was uh, about his age, I was about his age and uh, single, vibrant, and I decided I'm going to find me a good Christian girl, you know, because I, I got saved about three hours before. So I, I figured I'd go find a Christian girl, and I was on a business trip in Michigan, and uh, a waitress took care of us, and uh, you know when you just look up those times, and it just, dang, you know, I never got hit with a hammer, guy says. I got hit. I got hit with a hammer and uh, uh, found out that she was a Christian girl. She uh, flew in the next week from Michigan and we started a relationship and uh, we were serious and uh, um, almost married the girl, almost married the girl. But, but here's the way I was back then. I wasn't that confident of a guy in doing things. I was confident in myself at the time, false confidence. but. I wasn't too confident, so just having a relationship and the risk of marrying someone was overwhelming to me. So I asked one of my buddies, I said, so, so you know, what do you think? And of course he was a wise Christian buddy, and I asked him, what do you think? He looked at me and said, she sure is pretty, Scott. I go, and? She sure is pretty. Went over to another buddy. I said, you know, what do you think? I'm getting closer and closer. I don't want to make a mistake. I'm ready for a serious relationship. And my other buddy said, she sure is pretty, Scott. She sure is pretty. Then went over to my third buddy, because you do everything in threes. I do anyway. And I, I asked him. He said, Scott, he goes, can you see her under the Christmas tree with your children in the future? And I pictured my, two of my children. They would look like this. And, uh, no, not really, but I, I, I pictured her under the Christmas tree, and I couldn't get a picture in my mind. It, my mind would not allow me to go there, to look at her in my future. And I was saved from the almost stupid decision I've ever made in my life. Because sometimes we want it marrying the wrong people, don't we? Yeah, a few of us in the room have experienced that, I'm sure. But this would have been a disaster because... What was pretty inside that wasn't as pretty, that was pretty outside wasn't as pretty inside. 
That's what I came to know. She probably thought that of me too. I thought I'm pretty, but you get it. And uh, then the very next year, I ran into my wife now, Debbie. And uh, she was pretty, but she was smart too, which really irritated me. It, like, you know, like intimidates you a little sometimes when they're that smart. And uh, she was not, she was just good at everything. We called her Debbie Barbie doll. And uh, I wasn't crazy with her like I was with the other one, but I started counseling with my friends again. And I said, so what do you think about this girl? And they said, we love her, Scott. And they went through all these characteristics of it. I was like, yeah, I noticed that too. I noticed that too. Yeah, I noticed that too. And then I asked my buddy again. He goes, can you see her under the Christmas tree with your children? And I went, yeah. Yeah, I can. Yeah. I can see her under the Christmas tree with my children. He goes, then go marry her. Now, I know that's not some deep psychological counsel there. But I'm pointing out, and I did marry, and I'm celebrating my 35th wedding anniversary, you know, uh, this year. I mean, I, I got two of my boys here. You may have been Nicola if I didn't do that, and you may have been Vinsola. You know, you may have not been men. You may have been, like, women with beards or something, you know. You, know, you, you don't know. You don't know. You don't know. What's the point? What's the, what's the point of my story? See, I had to learn to be the man who God guides. And that's what we're going to talk about. We've been through four, three, really, tonight's the fourth, three episodes of this. And if you're interested in this, I want you to go back and watch. Just go to our website, and there's a whole part there for studies. And just go back and watch one through three. But I'm going to summarize for you what God has given us in how God guides a man. Let me ask you a question. Who needs some guidance in here from God? Yeah, we know it. We're, you know, we're the guys. We kind of know that. We kind of know he knows everything, and we know hardly anything compared to what he knows. He knows what's best for us, even though we think we know what's best for us. Because there was a time there where I thought what was best for me was marrying that girl. You see? And there was a time when I didn't know what was best for me was marrying my wife, Debbie. You see? So, the man God guides. What does it look like? Who does it look like? And let me tell you one thing. I don't know about you, if you agree with me with this. A Christian man's natural gifts will always exhaust the arm of his flesh. Meaning, the more talented you are, the more frustrated you're going to get because your talent will take you to areas that your character cannot hold. In this situation, your flesh will take you to areas that your spirit man can only hold and your flesh cannot. You see, so eventually your natural gifts will make you X amount of money. It'll let you marry a pretty girl, drive a nice car. It'll, your natural gifts will help you sometimes. The ones who struggle are closer to Christ. The ones with all the natural gifts, they have a road to hoe. They have a road to hoe. If you like Dr. Andrew, if you look at him, he just, he looks like a doctor. He looks brilliant. You should have seen him 18 years ago. He goes, I'm not certain about this Jesus guy. He goes, there's got to be other ways to heaven besides Jesus. It just makes sense. And I, you know, I, I, I counseled him and mentored him in love and said, pick two, pick two, pick. You know, and uh, we spent a lot of time together. But you don't have to look like that. Does God guide you? Think about it for a second. Does God guide your life? Well, if you feel you want to enter into other areas that God can help you with your job, with your marriage, with wayward kids maybe in relationships that are just not where you want them to be, with your friendships, who do you have speaking into your life? Who do you have speaking into your life? Meaning your major issues that you go through with yourself. Is there any of us here, maybe we're stuck with anger, stuck with regret, stuck with pride, st stuck with self-hatred, anxiety, and we don't know why. Man of God, that's not coming out unless you're humble enough to allow it to come out. See, God says he will guide you. One of my favorite verses in the Bible says, 
I will instruct, there's David speaking, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go and I will guide you with my eye. The other versions say upon you. And when I say David speaking, David wrote it, but God stopped him right in the middle of the 32nd Psalm and this was all God. Not that the other wasn't all God. Go figure that out. The word instruct, teach, and guide. In the scripture, the Hebrew word for guide is like the ropes on a ship that were lent, let out for navigation. Here's another wonderful thing. Each one of these words in the original language does not say instruct. It says, I will instruct you if you let me. I will teach you if you let me. I will guide you if you let me. For some of us, that's, that's why, because we just want God's guidance, and God wants you to let him first. You know? That it, it's, okay, so your question is, how, do we, how does God guide us? We took care of that in the first, in the first uh, session, and we are told, we are told, this is a paraphrase here, give God the right to direct your life. Well, that sounds sacrilegious, doesn't it? Give God the right to direct your life. But remember, what we just told you here, these Hebrew words actually mean, let me instruct you, let me teach you, let me guide you, and I will. So God is asking you to let him. We came away with this from the first episode. God will not do for a man that which he wants to do with a man. God will not do for a man that which he wants to do with a man. And that was the first. Because God gives you his word that he will guide you. Now, there either is a God or there is no God. And I, I feel like I'm in a room with guys that believe that God exists. Now, God cannot exist and lie. God cannot exist and not guide you. But he puts conditions here. He says, not only do I give you my word, but I actually wait upon you. It says in Isaiah 30, 18, it says the Lord waits to be gracious to you. The, way, the Lord waits to lavish so much upon you. And what does he wait for? What does God wait for? God waits for man's willingness to wait on him. Right now, some of you may be looking for an answer in your life. You're looking for that position at work. You're looking for financial issues to be healed in your life. You're looking for things. When you ask for that, do you expect an answer right away? See, what God's saying is love me more than the answer. Love me more than the solution because I know what's best for you. That's what he's saying. And we came out of our second episode realizing it's not God withholding guidance to make you wait on him. It's you and I withholding obedience to wait on God. Okay, can someone go home right now with that? Can you go home now? Can you go home now? Because you know, you know, he, I was just sitting at his feet the days before we were going to do this. Listen to him, he's blowing my mind some of this stuff. And I'm like, okay. God may not always guide you to your goal, but will always guide you for your good. Always guide you for your good. Episode 3. The, the way a man is led by God is to first want to be led by God. Oh, this is a tough one. Oh, this is the toughest one. That's why we saved it for episode 3. And uh, again, you go back and listen to this, but it gets worse. A man should not pretend to know God's will till he contends with his own will. Turn to the guy next to you and say, hey, that's good for you. Tell him, that's really good for you. Yeah, yeah. Now, what this is saying, what this is saying is a man should not seek to know God's will till he submits his will. In other words, I want this promotion at job. It'll help me get this house. It'll help me make my wife this happy. It'll help me do this. I want that now. When you're praying for God's will and asking for it, which he tells you to do, it's a request. Go ahead and do it. 
But if he says no, are you okay with that? Because he knows best. See, we think we know best when it comes to being guided by God. Some of you here, you're going through terrible trauma and turmoil because you're so enclosed with your own mind, you can't get away. You're listening to yourself instead of talking to yourself. Instead of talking what God says, you're listening to your flesh. And here it is. It's a whole conspiracy theory going on in your own head. It's not true. Almost all the fears, really bad fears we go through. I'm not talking about a fear of someone dying or sick or anything like that or leaving us. You know, th th those are accurate sometimes. But most of our fears of, oh no, what's going to happen? You're going to find out they're all lies. They're all your mind playing with you. It's a battlefield in the mind. Satan, Satan's job is to create strongholds in your heart, but he gets there through the mind. He gets there through the six hours of secular TV that some of us watch per day. And we can't understand why we can't experience the spirit-filled life. We spend six hours in a secular world, and it's not that the TV shows are bad or anything like that. They're just teaching you stories how to succeed with no God. They're teaching you stories how to succeed with no God. Even my favorite show, Blue Bloods, where they pray, you know, they pray every Sunday. I love that show. But there's no, there's no, I don't know, well, well, come on, let's pray about this. You don't see a lot of that. But that's reality. The TV show is the world's reality. You as a man have to choose which reality you're going to follow. Because one is a false reality. And you're going to find that out. Because the unseen is more real than the seen. Turn around the guy and say, that was a good one for me. I like that one. Go ahead. <sighs> then we went into, uh, then we went into uh, lesson three, episode three. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. How many have heard that one forever, right? That's one of the favorites. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he'll give you the desires of your heart. Let me ask you a question. What if we move that around and it says, delight yourself in the Lord, and he'll give you the right desires of your heart. Because some of you have, and I know your desires, some of you. Some of you have, if you got your desires, you'd be, so, uh, <laughs> you'd be tough. You'd be tough. Your friends would leave you. Your wife would leave you. Your kids would leave you. Because I know some of you. I know you. I'm part of this team. Take the light in the Lord and will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your and way to him. Now, we came out with that, the man who delights in the Lord only wants what God wants. And here's the good part. It's what's best for you. Hit the guy next to you. Say, that was for me. Go ahead. Hit the guy next to you. Don't hurt him. Don't. Delight in the Lord. The man who delights in the Lord depends. Say depend. depends. Depends on the Lord. Is the man who will be directed of the Lord. You see, and it, you know, easier said than done. But we find God's word promises we will be guided. We find that God waits for you and I to be willing to wait on Him. There's such a key there. Just that alone will change your prayer life. When you go to prayer and you don't look for an immediate answer, how would your prayer life change? Lord, I gave it to you. Paul prayed three times. Remove it on. Paul prayed three times. Hi. 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 My mic is rubbing. This shirt that you wore? Looks nice. Very nice shirt. Don't, don't raise my hand. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry so much, guys. <laughs> guys, turn to the man in the box next to you and say, that was a good one. You guys aren't in boxes. These guys are in boxes. Turn to the man in the box next to you. God promises and gives you his word. God waits for you to wait, to want to wait. For you want to wait because man wants to be guided by God. Man has to want to be guided by God. Are you okay with that? And then God has ways to guide you. And what we ended up with was a very dangerous example in the Psalms of Israel insisting on God give them something. And the way God works amazes me. He gave them, in all the instances, 
what they insisted upon. Because God works within your maturity. God works within your heart of where you're at in maturity with Him. And here's the thing. God is more concerned about a man's maturity than a man's mission. Even when the mission is for God Himself. He cared more about David's heart than David's heroism. He cared more about Paul's pride than he did in Paul's preaching of the gospel. See, God cares more about your growth than anything good you can ever do for him. Do you understand that? That's how much he loves you. See, well, how does he get things done? By guys who are cooperative. They're called the men God uses. It says in Scripture, in um, Jeremiah 16, I read it about an hour or two ago, Jeremiah 16, 16, it says, I will send fishermen to fish. I will send hunters to hunt. I go, Lord, you're getting me excited. Why are you telling me this before I go up there? You see, but that's how he works. If you love him and you're willing. You see, I love him because I screwed up so much. I got so many bumps in my head. He stuck with me when I couldn't get myself out of the land of stupid. And now I feel like I live five minutes from the land of stupid every hour of my day. Go ahead, turn it to the other guy on, on Zoom and all that now. See, that was a good one for you, not me. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, because how many people know we, we, we reached a valley of stupid? How many people know there's a lot of, lot of valleys where we run in? You seem to relate very well, sir, in this land. You're looking at me when you're shaking your head. That's good. Amen. All right. You don't say amen. You don't say amen to that. Anyway, uh, now God will give you what you want if you insist. God, she's driving me crazy. Give me a woman who will love me. Give me a woman who will appreciate me for who I am. She's driving me crazy. No, my friend, this is who I chose for you. And you stay right there for a second. Or he may tell you to go. Or he may tell you to go in different circumstances that he per permits. But if you insist, instead of wanting to know what he says best, he'll actually give that to you. But let me ask you a question. What are ways God guides you in your life? What are ways? Listen. What's that? Through listening. But through listening. Okay. How many, what other ways does God, do you find God guides you? Worship music. Worship music. You, you feel his presence. You know, who said that? You know, you know sometimes... It's no words, it's not a voice, it's just his presence. Right, brother? Just his presence gives you such an amazing peace and comfort that all of a sudden the direction doesn't even matter, but you're being directed. Right? That's for me. I don't know about you. The Bible and prayer. Obviously, direction always has to come along with what it says in the Bible and prayer. Now, I'm one of them guys that read the Bible and pray at the same time as I journal. I have this uh, a little Gabbado syndrome. For those of you not Italian, don't know what that means. It's a little thick-headed. And I got some ADD and OCD stuff running around me. So I'm checking the Yankee and Met box score 13 seconds after I go, I love you, Father. Oh, what did Aaron Judge do last night? Yeah, yeah. So I'm one of those members. So if I don't, Stay here and stay here and write my prayer to him. I'm not saying this for you. This is me. I just got to tell him how much I love him when I write because I start telling him how much I love him when I pray. I, I, I'm telling Aaron Judge I love him two seconds later and it's the wrong God. Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. Okay. This is real man Christianity, isn't it? The Holy Spirit. You get an inner witness. You get an inner witness to what's going on, don't you? Meaning, you just feel, you have a, whether it's your conscience or something says, yeah, that's right. That's right. Then you watch and wait on God. You watch and wait in the circumstances. That's your victory. If you get one thing out of tonight, learning to wait upon God and looking the next day or two for the answer instead of right there for the answer, and you're watching your circumstances... And here's where we're going. 
My brotherhood helped me marry the right girl. My brotherhood helped me choose the right profession. My brotherhood is what helped me out of the depths of despair when I was engulfed with anxiety and pain and fear. My brotherhood are the ones that come in and say, that's okay what you're going through, it's just the season. You'll be out of this. We all do. Let's walk through it. Guys, I talk to guys every week, every single week, of issues going on in their lives. And I know when I get off the phone, I got to make a decision. Either me or one of the coaches need to be a valley walker with this man because he'll never forget those who valley walk with him. Never. And God tells you to restore a brother who has fallen in a gentle, loving way. And it's called walking in the land of stupid with our brother. Just telling you what it is. You know, brother cheats on his wife. What are you going to do? Hammer him and come over here? He's distraught. He made a mistake. I'm not saying it's good. I'm not saying it's okay. But what are you going to do with the guy? What are you going to do? What would you say? Embrace him. You embrace him. You embrace him. You gently restore him. But how do you do that? We're going to teach you that in the next few months. We're going to teach you that because it's not something we know as men how to do. Because we have our own fears and our own weaknesses. But we're going to teach you that in the next 120 days. The brotherhood is the key. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Now, is that, is that anyone's favorite verse in the room? I know it's my wife's. And uh, I just want to point out, you see this word acknowledge up here on the board? This is a Hebrew word called yada. You know what the word means? If you notice, this is our meditation scripture for today. And if you noticed, in this paraphrased Bible here, it says, with all your heart, rely on him to guide you and he will lead you. Same verse we're looking at. Become intimate. This word intimate is the word yada in Hebrew. It is the word that is used in Genesis when it says Adam knew Eve. That means they had intercourse to make a child. Adam knew Eve. Adam yadad Eve. The Hebrew for yada means a, a relationship so close that you're one. Now if we read this differently, it says become intimate with God in whatever you do and he will lead you wherever you you go. I'm going to stop there. I'm going to stop there for you. Do you get that? If you don't, I'll stop. Do you have a question about that? Guys in the box, type it in the chat if you have a question about that. What does acknowledge me? I always say, uh, hey, God, this is what I'm doing, and you'll direct my paths. Well, that was not measurable at all. But when I have a relationship with him, and I wait on him, and I want what he wants for me because he knows best, that's called intimacy. And I know his character. He would never allow me to do anything that wasn't best for his glory and my good. And sometimes my good and his glory don't, don't line up, and I'm okay with that, and you need to be too. Life hurts, doesn't it? There are seasons that are painful, but it says here, I will take you to the valley as long as you're close to me. So, we can say this. Divine direction requires divine relationship. Would you agree with that? Okay, am I okay? We're good. Now, you receive divine direction not out of keeping rules with God, but out of relationship. Do you understand that? You don't get guided because you're a good boy, although obedience comes, comes with a promise of guidance. But God is saying here that I will guide you because I love you. I will guide you because you're intimate with me. I will guide you because you're willing to wait on my will. And you'll get supernatural genius ideas, supernatural genius guidance from the Holy Spirit. Why? Because you're willing to follow him and submit your will for his will. 
Now, if that is true, and God has set that up that way, what is true when a brother comes over to you and says, listen, you look a little you know, harsh with your wife lately. I see you're a little angry with her. Is there anything going on that we could talk about? Now, I wouldn't say it exactly like that. I'm just trying to be quicker. But that person I would need a relationship with to say that to, wouldn't I? I couldn't say that to somebody without a relationship. Anybody have a relationship with their wives in the room here? And there's still a few things you can't say. Turn a man next to you and says, sounds like a man's been married 35 years. <laughs> that you can say amen for. <laughs> Wisdom and counsel requires relationship. Wisdom and counsel requires relationship. You, to, to, to trust a buddy who has your best interests at heart and to receive his wisdom and counsel, you need honor, respect, love, commitment, and trust. We have an old saying in business, never take advice from a man who has nothing to lose with the advice he's giving you. You see, the Bible says your pastors will be held accountable. Let's call them spiritual directors, whoever that may be, because a lot of you can't get to your pastors. But your pastor and your spiritual directors who sit over your life and speak into your life, they will be held accountable by God for your soul. It says that in Hebrews 13, 17, if you want to look it up when you get home. But they have something to lose by advising you something that is wrong. Oh, they'll be held accountable. And every pastor knows that because that, that's, what they, that's what they say. So would you agree with me that men who seek to know God's will must seek men who know God well? Men who seek to know God's will must seek men who know God well. Every son of God See, if you have a relationship with God, you develop a relationship with a brother. And this is why we made SEAL Team for you guys. SEAL Team is simply an acronym meaning strengthen, encourage, admonish, and love one another. Most men were never taught how to do that in their lives. I see 50, 60, 70 year old men today that still do not know how to be friends. Everything revolves around themselves. They don't know what sacrificial friendship is like. They don't, they don't know what it's like seeing one chair and looking at the one chair and says, that's for you, buddy. Seeing one bed and says, no, you sleep there. I'll sleep on the floor. They don't get that because they've never been taught that. See, Jesus lives sacrificially. He taught us how to live. The word agape, love, means sacrificial love. It's a type of love. It's a divine love that you get from a divine relationship. And then the relationship goes this way. And then miracles start happening. You start hearing God from your brother. You start those five, those five areas that we talked about. You start hearing God from people who are around you. It could be a sister, a friend, a brother, a mother, a father, a son, or a daughter. I ran into uh, a man the other day we were talking and we were talking about God's guidance. And he goes, yeah, he goes, you, you, he goes, you're really like stuck on that. You listen to a lot of people to hear from God. I said, how do you know? He goes, well, I ran into you into a, in a bathroom one time at an event. I said, well, this is going to get good. I said, yeah. And he said, uh, we started talking and as I was talking, you stopped and made a real funny face and said, I cannot believe I forgot to bring that up to the men because I just came down from speaking to a group of men. And I looked at him, I go, I just forgot that. That's the Lord reminding me. I ran back up. I ran back up and told the men in the room there because that, that was from God, from a man I never knew. I know him now, but he was reminding me this went on 10, 15 years ago. You see, God will speak to you through other people, if you allow it, man of humility. God will speak to you if you're not too busy protecting your weakness, always trying to prove your strength that's not really there, and pretending to be someone that you're really not. 
You'll never get guided that way because you're letting yourself live by your past wounds. Not until, man of God, you get comfortable with your, not your strengths. I know everybody teaches strengths. Not until you get comfortable with what you can't do in life. Not until you get comfortable with your limitations will you experience the peace of God. See, that's what Paul, who conquered the world for Christ, that's what Paul did. Talk about a tough guy. That's what Paul did. He has to remove this problem three times. God said, no, my grace is sufficient. And Paul says, you know what? You're right. I'm better off recognizing my weakness here. I'm paraphrasing. 2 Corinthians 12, 10, uh, 9 and 10. But what Paul's saying is, wait a minute. I need a relationship with my limitations, not a relationship with what I'm great at. I know what the world teaches you, man of God. And yes, you play to your strengths. It'd be silly to try and go play for the New York Yankees right now. I would not make the best shortstop, right? I, if, I, if I said, listen, Aaron Judge, I want to replace you right now, okay, because I think I could hit 62. Home run. It wouldn't work at all. And plus, I don't have the ability. Think of the frustration and the twist in me of praying to God. God, you say you'll give me whatever my heart desires. I want to back clean up for the New York Yankees. I'm exaggerating, of course, but it's not going to happen. But some of us here are praying to God like that. And we're asking for things that are not the best for us in dealing with who God made you to be. I'm going to tell you what you're designed to be. I'm going to tell you what you're designed to do. You're designed and created to be a male, M-A-L-E. In Genesis, that word male is zakar in Hebrew. I'm not trying to mess you up. Nick, are you getting this one? Are you following this one? Okay. Zakar means remember. It was also the name given to an assistant of a king that everywhere the king went, the zakar was supposed to leave a mark where the king was. Do you think that's a coincidence that you're called male? Females glorify God in different ways. You're to leave a mark everywhere Jesus Christ goes in your life. That means we talk to each other. We hear God through each other. Everybody? No, but you'll know. You'll know when God's speaking. And sometimes they'll bring you correction, which really stinks because we're perfect. And we think we are. And we think too highly of ourselves. But God comes in and he says, forget all that. My grace is sufficient. My grace, is, it's okay to have weaknesses. It's okay for other people to see you're not cool. Not you, Dr. Andrew. But yeah, yeah, most, most, most people. It's okay to see people that you don't know everything. Because many men today, oh, ho, ho, oh my goodness. They, they got Google knowledge, but life foolish, if you know what I'm saying. They know a lot of stuff, but they have no wisdom to apply what they know. You see, you, you could tell the man who's got both. Are you being spoken to through your brothers in the Lord? And that's my message for you tonight. For you to consider, for you to consider being spoken to. Because this is what it says here, guys. All those are guided by the Spirit of God who are the sons of God. Romans 8.14 says, if you're a son of God, you get guided by God. Are you a son of God? Have you received the sonship of God in knowing he's a father who knows what's best for me? He knows how to guide me, whether I agree with it or not. His will is better than my will. See, that's what a son does. He may complain. You're allowed to complain. God lets people complain. That's, that's for sure. Hold your scripture. He goes, I don't like how this relationship is going on. Stick with it. Love them. Push through. I'll give you my spirit. Push through. But I can't do this. You're right, you can't do it. But you and I together can do it. God, I just can't stand this job. It's too stressful. I just, I'm not sleeping at night. Just, God may say to look somewhere else, or God may say to stay. But you'll never find that out unless you have a brother in your corner. You'll never find that out without another man who has your best interest at heart, who loves you 
like Christ loved the church. He loves you unconditionally, sacrificially, and he'll go get you and restore you as a brother if he has to, as it says in Galatians. You know, he'll go restore you gently. That's what a brother does for you. That's what a brother does. If you are the sons of God. And listen what the next verse says in a paraphrase. Romans 8, 16. It's one of my favorite paraphrases of 8, 16 that I've ever read. And you did not receive the spirit of religious duty. It's coming right after. It's telling you you're led by son. If you're a son, you're led by God. You do not receive the spirit of religious duty leading you back to the fear of never being good enough. But you've received the spirit of full acceptance, which the, the Greek of uh, that word is uh, eos, and what it basically means is adoption as a son, sonship. You see, man of God, as a son, you're right and your privilege is to have divine guidance to know what to do. How you receive that guidance is going to come from your relationship vertically and your relationship horizontally with other men. And here's, here is what we're going to do. Because if I asked you a question right now, and the question goes like this, who was your first call outside of your wife when Defeat and discouragement attack you. I, man, discouragement is like, a, like a, a poison that slowly eats you up. Just gets worse and worse if you haven't noticed. You know, you get, some of you get depressed, some of you have personalities that never get depressed. But, you know, it, it's not fun because this usually leads to anxiety. When a decision must be made by this date. <sighs> Don't you hate those? When... You have a deliverance and you have a victory that you have a celebration. We just found out my daughter's pregnant. You know, so we're going to have our first grandchild and uh, that, 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 thank you. I'm sharing that with you because when I share joy, it's multiplied. When I share my pain, it's cut in half and diluted. That's what we do as brothers. Direction you believe from God. Who is your first call? Do you have a man in your life that is your first call? Think about it. You know, shake your head or even write down who it is. Do you have a man in life who is your first call? You see, the man God guides, the man God guides is a man that God will connect up with other brothers. And it's vital that we understand that. Here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do. In the next 120 days, we're going to meet here every Thursday night. Not next Thursday, but every Thursday after that. For the whole fall, we're going to meet here on Thursday nights. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through basic training. Uh, I firmly believe that there are certain uh, truths that God has for you, certain correction that God has for you that are best to be experienced without your wife sitting next to you. Some of you are pretty funky, you know, and I'm one of you, so I understand, and my wife has a pointy elbow. And when I go through stuff that a pastor will say was sitting on a Sunday, all I got to do is look this way, and she's looking right at me. I, she's just looking right at me. The point I'm bringing out is there's certain stuff. Now, if you're like Joe Magri, you can't sit with this stuff with your wife next to you, because I know him, and I know his wife. And uh, he was more messed up than most of you in the room put together. Now he's super godly man. But, I mean, his life has changed because he's followed the Lord. But there are just certain things you couldn't discuss with Joe, with his wife around. So what we're going to do is we're going to meet here every Thursday for the next 12 weeks. For the next 120 days... I'm telling you, if you give God the next 120 days, every Thursday night. Now, you can't make it here, go on Zoom, but you got to be here. Okay? 120 days, you make it, you take the guy you brought, and you make sure you come back here every Thursday. And in 120 days, if you're not a completely different man, you say it takes decades sometimes. <coughs> Hear me out. If you're not a completely different man, Pastor Gary Petrillo will refund your money. <laughs> 
<laughs> There's no money. It doesn't cost anything. But we're even giving you the sale team free. You're going to get it this week, and you're going to get a, a link. And we that's that's a free, that's from the actual curriculum, and we're giving it to you for free. Just so you could understand what we're going to do. You see, God says he's going to send fishermen to fish. He's going to send hunters to hunt. What do you think we're going to fish? Other men. Yeah, we're not going to catch fish that are alive and then make them dead. We're going to catch men who are dead and make them alive. You see, because that's what the Great Commission is about. See, that's what we're going to do in here for the next three to four months. And we're going to take this on online through the Internet and, you know, whoever else wants to join us. Because I got news for you. Yours is a car. And when you fulfill the very purpose you were designed for, it doesn't matter what else is going on in your life. When you're bringing Christ in your heart and sending it out to another you're fulfilling the purpose in which you were created for. You weren't created to be an accountant. You weren't created... You, we do that stuff. Sorry, Joe. Uh, we, we, do, we, we do that stuff because we got to pay for life. And we like certain things. You see, you were created to be zakah. And this is what we're going to do. I'm telling you, it's a money-back guarantee. If Pastor Gary doesn't give you money back, God will. Oh, sorry. No, no. You know what I'm talking about. And I challenge you because, guys, we've been at this 25 years. We're going to put you through basic training in September. In October, you're going to go through team training. And in the month after that, you're going to go into our favorite mission training. And the joy that is going to come in your life is not going to be from getting a sale. The joy is not going to become, it's a, it's a different joy that you have with your wife. It's a joy that's here. Most men are not living wrong, they're living low. Most Christian men are not living wrong. They're living low, meaning you have no clue what you're missing. Does anyone here feel like you're a spiritual? Sit down. Does anyone here feel like you're a spiritual billionaire? Oh, sorry. Okay. Does anybody here feel like you're a spiritual billionaire? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. You, talk, you know what I'm talking about. And when you got to run the credit cut up and there's no money, you still feel like a spiritual billionaire. You'd much rather have the money and be a spiritual billionaire than not have the money. But you know what I'm talking about. So this is what we're going to do together. We're going to do this in the next 120 days. And I want to invite you to this mission and what we're going to be doing here. Father God, we thank you for this time. I bless, I bless your heart, Lord. We bless your heart. The men on Zoom all over the country bless your heart, Lord God. The men in this room bless your heart, Lord God. Not because of only what you've done on the cross for us. Not because you've made us sons. And most of us didn't even know what that meant. It's not because of that. It's because of who you are. That we can trust you. That you are the perfect being. That you hold the stars in one hand. And you actually care and hold our cares, our fears, our anxieties, our self-hatred, everything that's wrong with us, in the other hand. And you accept us like none of that matters. Matter of fact, you look so forward to maturing us. We thank you for this, for, for bringing us to you, but we also thank you for not leaving us that way. In Jesus' name. Men, I want to introduce you to Pastor Gary. Pastor Gary is the discipleship pastor here at MDN. He is also the latest recipient of MDN's, well, our top award, which is the Fisher of Men Award, which is given to a pastor with exceptional skills in pastoring men, uh, in discipling men. So let me introduce you to you, Pastor Gary, please. Amen. Amen. Right on there. Thank you so much. It's great to see you guys here tonight. Uh, just so you know, I'm in the room next door helping to be the liaison on Zoom for the 30 men that are on there right now. And uh, really just want to let you know there are 30 great guys uh, that are watching on Zoom right now. And so, hey, guys, uh, good to see you from that room to this room. Uh, but great guys that I'm getting to know, just like there's great guys that are here tonight uh, in this room, like uh, my friend Errol, who's from Florida, who's on Zoom tonight. 
Uh, another friend, uh, Joey, who moved from Brooklyn to upstate New York. Guy named Levi, who moved from upstate New York to Queens. Uh, found out a guy named Lewis is married just as many years as Pastor Scott, 35 years. And so this is all happening on Zoom while we're also here in person. And so it's great to see the camaraderie and it's great to see how the Lord is bringing men together, whether it's right here in Long Island, uh, representing the tri-state area, or on Zoom, representing probably about, right now, about 12 different states uh, in the United States. So really excited. Can we give it up for the guys that are on Zoom tonight? Can we do that? When I first walked into MDN, it was at a boot camp, and there were two things that I was in awe of when I walked into uh, that conference center. Here's what they were. Number one, there were all these men worshiping Jesus, and you don't see that often in many places. I was in awe of that when I first walked into an MDN boot camp. And the second thing that I was in awe of was the revelation that God had given to Pastor Scott through the word of God for men just like myself. And Pastor Scott is probably one of the most humble people I have ever met. Uh, but what the truth is, he has insight and revelation and a mission and a vision that God has given him to reach men in a way uh, like many people haven't been able to do. And I've experienced that firsthand in my own life. And so I just wanted to thank God uh, for that experience. But here's what I want you to realize. There's a difference between being exposed to something and it becoming your own experience. When I walked into that MDM you know, uh, church with that boot camp, I was exposed to thousands of men worshiping the Lord. I was exposed to this revelation of the Lord through Pastor Scott, through the Word of God. That was the exposure that I experienced, but that's different than experiencing that for myself. And that's what MDN and the mission and the vision of MDN is. Not just to have the exposure and then you leave and wait the next year to be exposed again, but that that exposure would give a desire for an experience and that through that experience, your life would be changed. And the way that we're going to have an experience with God and not just an exposure to the things of God, the, the way that's going to happen in our lives is really going to be through discipleship. Discipleship is so important. Turn to the guy next to you and just tell him, discipleship. Come on, let me hear that word. So in order to reach this on such a large scale and for the vision of reaching a million men to happen, it really requires two things. Number one, it obviously requires financial support. Even just being in this room tonight, even facilitating what's going on on Zoom tonight, all of this requires financial support. And Pastor Scott often reminds me, and as a pastor myself, I know how true this is. It's not just putting money in the basket once in a while. It's reoccurring support. So come on, let me hear you say that word, reoccurring, reoccurring. Support. support. So this ministry requires reoccurring support in order to reach the vision of not just exposing guys to the things of God, but that it may become their experience so that they can go help other guys. And the second thing it needs is also reoccurring. It's reoccurring involvement. Let me hear you say reoccurring. Involvement. We're so thankful for the reoccurring financial support, but we would also like to see men reoccurring in their involvement while they're here at Men's Discipleship Network. And this opportunity on Thursday nights, starting on September 8th, is a great opportunity to continue to come weekly as Pastor Scott has charged us with his vision so that this could become our experience. And so we're gonna bring our offering to the Lord tonight, whether you're here in person or you're watching on Zoom, there'll be a slide up on the screen which will let us know the different ways that we can give. But as we're talking about giving financially and that being reoccurring, let me emphasize, and I can't emphasize it enough, we thank God for the financial support, but we'd almost rather make sure that your involvement is reoccurring, where we're seeing you on a regular basis 
and you're involved, whether in person or on Zoom, you're involved in a SEAL team, you've gone through the mission-driven man curriculum, the weapons curriculum, because we just don't want you to be involved once in a while and just have exposure. We want you to have your own experience with the Lord and be trained to be a disciple. And if you're a disciple, guess what you do after you're trained? You train other disciples. Amen? So let's look at the screen real quick. Here's the ways you can give. You can give online if you go to mensdiscipleshipnetwork.com. You can do that from your smartphone, whether you're here in person or if you are on Zoom. A very simple, easy way, you can text the number 833-500-4685. You text the word give. If you haven't set it up, it'll take about two minutes to set it up. Once you do that, you can continue to give that way, and it literally takes seconds to give in the future that way. And of course, you can make a check written out to Men's Discipleship Network. You can put that in the offering uh, bucket tonight, or cash in the bucket tonight, or in an envelope in the bucket tonight, or you can mail it uh, to the Men's Discipleship Network address. And we want to thank you. Uh, let's pray over this offering uh, that it would not only be reoccurring, but your involvement in Men's Discipleship Network would be reoccurring. Amen? Who's having a good time so far here tonight? Wasn't that an amazing teaching? Come on, guys on Zoom. Wasn't that an amazing teaching that we heard tonight? Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this offering. We know that we cannot do what we do here at Men's Discipleship Network without the generous donations, the obedient giving, the reoccurring offerings of the men that support this ministry. And Lord, I pray that you would raise up an army of men who are willing to give financially and support with our wallets what we say with our mouths when it comes to the things of God, when it comes to men's ministry, and when it comes to reaching other men with the gospel that will change their life. So Lord, I pray that you'd get a hold of every man that the thought of giving, you would reveal to them the importance of it and how not only will you use their giving to bless this ministry, but through their obedient giving, you will bless them in their relationship with you as they trust you in the area of finances in their life. And God, secondly, which is just as important, if not more, Lord, I pray that every man here would have reoccurring involvement in Men's Discipleship Network, whether it is in person or it's the 30 guys on Zoom tonight. We pray, Lord, that each and every one of them would remain a pillar of this ministry, that we would be trained and ready to train others, that we would reach the vision of reaching a million men with the gospel of Jesus Christ. In your name we pray, and all God's men and warriors say, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Men's Discipleship Network is touching lives by bringing the hope and freedom of the gospel of Jesus Christ to men and their families. We want to thank all of you who are regular supporters of the ministry. Your continued financial and prayer support makes you a valuable partner in our work together. If you are being blessed by the teaching of men's pastor Scott Caesar, but are not yet supporting the ministry, please consider providing your financial support so that he and Men's Discipleship Network can continue its mission of changing families one man at a time. Make a commitment today to partner with MDN by scheduling recurring monthly donations on our website at mensdiscipleshipnetwork.com slash donate or by texting the word GIVE to 833-500-4685. Your regular support helps MDN pay for important programs and personnel needed to expand our ministry to men across the United States and around the world. Thank you for standing with us.